Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Mosaic Company. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soil School. Now, over the years, we've heard a lot about the four R's of nutrient management. The right source, the right timing, the right rate, and placement of nutrients. Today, we're going to explore a new concept, the five R's of tillage. OMAFA crop innovation specialist Ian McDonald and tillage specialist Jim Boak shared the philosophy at Ontario Diagnostic Days this summer. These five R's start with having the right reason for tillage. Farmers then have to determine the right depth, timing, speed, and the right tool. Here's Ian McDonald and Jim Boak. So the four R's was a game changer for nutrient management, right? It, it helped us focus on the reasons and how much we're using and when we're using it. And, and a system that was easy to, to remember. Very easy to remember. Yeah, it, we locked into it real quick. So why not do it for, for tillage? Because actually there's nobody training anyone on tillage. It's, it's the wild, wild west out there. We do what we've always done or do what our farm equipment dealer tells us. But there's nobody really focused on the reasons for tillage and the effect of tillage, how it changes the habitat. And part of our discussion, Jim, was that we need people to be more critical thinking in agriculture about the decisions they're making, not just do what they did last year or what Dad and Grandpa did. It's what does that field need? So one of the things that, that makes it difficult is we have more options now than we've ever had in the past. It's very difficult to know which tool you need to use. So the, the choice has to come through, if you're going to do it right, is has to come through a thought process. Every field needs to be managed in differently, and even parts of fields have to be managed differently. So that also creates uh, indecision or, or inability to, to come to a conclusion. We know there needs to be a reason, or we should know there needs to be a reason. So that's our first R. Why are we doing this? What is the reason we're doing this? Is it to warm the soil, to get it a little drier, to fill in ruts, to control weeds? Why are we doing it in the first place? Because Mother Nature has already created the seed bed. We just have to take advantage of it or fix what doesn't work. And it might be a timing thing. We might not have time to just no-till or think we don't. So right timing is important in choosing not only the tillage tool, but when we use it, and so that goes back to the reason. And relative to the soil condition in terms of moisture and such we're talking exactly. about. Exactly. We, we need to have the timing correct because we can do so much damage if we get in too wet, too dry, if, if we're not, if we're too deep. So that's our next point, the next R, is what's the right depth? So often we, we buy tools and we set the depth and we keep using it at the same depth every year because we don't have the operator training or maybe they don't have the managers training the operator so we know what depth to set and we can create significant problems with root growth and development by operating at the same depth all the time or too deep deeper than we need to the right speed there's a huge difference in how different tools can be operated at speed and, and their do, impact and the impact can be tremendous we we can create erosion problems, we can create density problems, we can create crusting problems. So the speed that we choose to run the tool has to match the soil condition. Otherwise, we're going to create more problems for ourselves and wind up doing more tillage. So that comes us, brings us to the right tool. We, if we know the right reason and the right timing, the right speed, we're able to select the tools. And, and as I said earlier, there's a lot of options, so it's not easy. And quite often, the choice is made not not by for the right reasons, but by what your neighbors are using or what you're being told by your farm equipment dealer. And so we think then the five R's of tillage will help us understand soil habitat and, and how we impact soil with our our implements and maybe we should never have called them tillage we should call them habitat management tools and the idea is that 
you know, when a farmer approaches me to ask about tillage, the first question is what tool should I be buying as opposed to what is the problem I'm trying to solve or the situation that I'm trying to create. And that encompasses the timing, the depth, the speed, and that helps us find the right tool for the thing. We're not saying everybody's going to have to go out and buy multiple tools. You can get tools that you can adjust by depth and speed and settings to, to meet the different needs. But you got to understand what you're after. The other piece of the equation that we were trying to talk to people about was the idea that things above ground we can visualize. So we look behind us, we see corn plants and soybean plants and wheat plants growing and we understand how that happens. We struggle with what's underground because one, it's not visible to us. Two is even if we could see it, it's so complex and at such a microscopic level relative to seeing you know, plants in the field. So if we think about a corn plant is at 34,000 per acre, 160 per acre for soybean 1.6 million for wheat. We can visualize that because we can look at it. How on earth do we comprehend the scale of a billion microorganisms in a gram of soil? And the thing is that they're microbes that we can't see. So how do we bring some visualization to it, which is the way we learn things? And so we were asking the crowd here who was livestock producers and what do livestock need to get to, uh, you know, marketable uh, weight and stuff to, to have a quality product to sell. And, you know, they need to have food and water and care and shelter and medicine and protection. Well, how come we don't relate that to our soil microbial population below ground, which is this breathing, living, reproducing, dynamic ecosystem that's continuously changing? So we sort of, Jim and I, coined the concept of soil livestock. If we visualize that community as livestock, everybody knows what it takes. Even if you're a cash crop farmer, you still understand what livestock need to produce to be uh, a product for the marketplace. And we're just trying to relate that to how we need to care for our soil uh, biological environment under our feet and help us comprehend that in the context of livestock, which we all sort of intuitively understand. And it's kind of out of, out of sight, out of mind. We, we don't see it. We, we don't hear it. So we don't even think about the fact that without that soil life sustaining us, we, we wouldn't exist. We all know that what happens with a, a hurricane goes through your community, it destroys the community, and you have to rebuild your habitat. And if you have the resources, you can build back. But if we continue to beat up on the soil when we don't need to, and if we don't supply the resources for it to rebuild, then that community is diminished or, or dies. And another word for resources for for the community below the ground is, is roots. That's where they get their shelter and their, their air and their their moisture so it's really important that when we do habitat management that we get a crop in immediately or or at least get a cover crop in if we're say going in after wheat in the in the summertime or if we can interseed corn to to try and extend that growing season I mean, you've talked about that how our growing season is very short so we limited amount of time to rebuild the resources in the soil